Yeah. It really so nice, man. See that GS in front of me is uh, working hard. This Ducati's not working nearly as hard as that GS up in front of me. What is that? That's someone who's... <laughs> That was awesome. Somebody was on like a little Piaggio three-wheeled scooter. Hey everybody, what is going on? Welcome to a special episode of Yammy Noob. I am here in Las Vegas about to embark on my first ride interview of this right here, the Ducati Desert X. I am so excited to test drive this motorcycle. As many of you know, I am a Ducati Scrambler Desert sled owner and enjoyer for the better part of three and a half years now. And the Desert X has always piqued my interest. So let's take a quick look at this motorcycle, give you guys some ins and outs and some specs. Then we're gonna get it out on the road and get it out off-road as well. And then at the of the video, I'll give you my full impressions on this fantastic looking adventure motorcycle. And I'm sure as many of you are thinking, yeah, you said you weren't going to do adventure videos anymore, but look at this thing. It's beautiful. Let's get into it. All right, guys, scoping out the Ducati Desert X here. First of all, what I want to say about this bike is the design language is just out of control. Um, this thing is such a beautiful machine. It just really comes across that Ducati did a lot of work to evoke that Kajiva 1980s Dakar rally racer thing. I think the front headlights over here just look so sweet, especially when you flick them on. They're so crisp and clear. It's a really, really cool looking motorcycle. Um, so this motorcycle is Ducati's kind of their most advanced off-road offering that they've ever had. It's got the 21-inch, 18-inch Outback setup, so proper spoked, big tires and wheel combination to get you rolling over all those rocks and logs and stuff that you would encounter on a forest road or something like that. It's got all the power and tech and feature that a modern ADV bike should have, so this thing is powered by Ducati's 937cc V-twin liquid-cooled. Makes about 115 horsepower, if memory serves me correctly, and this motor is derived from the same engine that is used in the Hyper Motard and the Monster as well. So this is kind of becoming their standard utilitarian 937cc uh, V-twin or L-twin that they are using. Overall, the Ducati Desert X is a pretty complete package, as I mentioned. Full suite of electronics, pretty big gas tank. You can also outfit it with some additional fuel right over there if you need to for that extra, extra range. And overall, this motorcycle is, uh, is a pretty complete package. The original Desert X renderings were actually at ICMA 2019, and they used the Scrambler 1100s as a base for that. Um, they actually had this kind of adventure prototype way back in 2019, and now they've actually released it with its own frame and its own uh, kind of architecture. This doesn't share anything with uh, the Scrambler models, even though it shares that desert namesake. So my sled is a much more root, uh, kind of rote utilitarian motorcycle compared to this Desert X. And I'm really curious to see how this thing's gonna translate. So I think we need to get it out on the road, see what it's like, take it off road a little bit and go have some fun at this motorcycle. All right, boys, swinging a leg over the Desert X. I'll tell you a little bit about these ergonomics, how they feel. Reasonably tall, I'm about 5'11 and I can just barely flat foot it. Um, how's the lock to lock? Oh, really nice lock to lock. That's good. Very comfortable, very upright. It actually seats a lot like my uh, desert sled, honestly, which is cool. Firing it on. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. Crisp throttle. That's good. Really nice throttle response on this. I like that. It's really crisp. It's in sport mode right now, so that's probably why. So maybe press and hold. Yeah, then you can change the modes here. Let's go ahead and st we'll start off in touring mode. Kind of get it set up like that and we'll kind of go from there. And I will check in with you guys as I ride this bike and learn a little bit more about it. But I did want to take off with it here so y'all get to see it. All right, taking off with the Desert X here. So far so good. I don't have much to report just yet because I just got this thing out on the road. Touring mode, quick shifter, up and down. Look at number third, nice positive engagement on that quick shifter. Really nice. Let's check the let's check the standing position. Yeah, that's good. Feels nice and comfortable. The reach to the bars is nice and mellow. Um, I'm again, I'm about 5'11. I think average sized human male, and uh, I feel like it's very comfortable to stand. My desert sled's the same way. It's got this really nice wide, tall bar, and so standing on it feels great. And this bike's the same way. Really like that. Seat could stand to be a little bit more comfortable. Um, I believe this thing has seat warmers, by the way, which is going to be really nice. Um, 
But yeah, we're gonna try to turn that on here in a little bit. The mirrors feel a little uh, a little cheap and strange for this bike. I would have thought it would have had these kind of cool bladed mirrors, you know, something more Ducati. But uh, yeah, it's got like, you know, Svartbill and 401 mirrors on it, which is really funny. <laughs> Let's go ahead and turn on the heated grips, shall we? Can I not do that while it's in gear? Maybe not. Let's see. Maybe got to put it in a neutral. I'm not seeing anything come up on screen. I don't think it has a seat warmer. I think just the just the heated grips. All right, guys, I'll report back. All right, boys, we made it out of the city. We're now cruising here through these beautiful rock formations and mountain peaks near Las Vegas. Going west right now, as you can see, towards Red Rock Canyon. And uh, yeah, the Desert X here is performing its kind of touring duties very, very well. I noticed that the windscreen doesn't appear to be adjustable. It doesn't seem like I can adjust this windshield. It seems very fixed in place, which is fine. I honestly think adjusted windshields are a little overrated on these bikes. It's sitting at a nice position for me right now. I feel like the wind is being, you know, buffeted pretty nicely. It's not a, you know, causing a weird imbalance in my helmet or anything. Like some windshields, when you put them all the way up at the top, they do a weird vibration thing. Um, cruise control on this bad boy. Let's see if we can get it set up and using fifth gear. Let's see about hitting a set button. And we're cruising, very easy. Passes my test for cruise control. All cruise controls need to work like this, Aprilia. Are you listening? <laughs> Let's go ahead and dab the brakes so cruise gets disengaged. We'll turn it off right there. TFT is pretty easy to read on this bike. I like the vertical setup. I didn't know how I was gonna feel about it, but it actually works well with this bike because visually speaking and design-wise, everything's kind of vertical. It's a very narrow motorcycle. And so when you look out here on the dash, you kind of expect a, a vertical dashboard. It'd be weird if it was a, a, a horizontal one. So I like that. I still got it in sport mode right now just because I'm on the road. I like having the most power possible. And uh, it's a punchy engine, man, this 937, even though it's a little detuned, I think, from uh, the Hyper Motard and the Monster. You know, fifth gear, nice surge of torque, nice power. And it's cool, man. This bike feels about as big as a T7, but it's got a little bit more juice and torque and power. Um, more than a little, a lot more juice and torque and power than a T7. Um, you know, I've ridden the Tuareg 660. I rode it last year in Sardinia off the coast of Italy. And I was really impressed with that bike. But I think the Desert X is a little bit more of a full-size, grown-up, nice touring machine. Although the Tuareg was really nice to ride too. You're really splitting hairs when you're talking about these bikes on road for these more premium middle and flagship adventure motorcycles. Obviously, if you ride something like a T7, it's a lot more bare bones. It's not gonna be as nice as this thing. This thing's got, you know, supposedly heated grips. I can't get them to turn on, which is a bit of a bummer when it's 48 degrees out right now as it is. What is that? That's someone who's... <laughs> That was awesome. Somebody was on like a little Piaggio three-wheeled scooter going down this road. That was amazing. Um, so yeah, I think uh, when you're looking at these middleweight and flagship bikes on road, they all do the job super, super well. I just wish I could get the heated grips to turn on. Um, I've been pressing the button, I'm long pressing it. I, I don't think it's equipped or it's turned off on this machine, which is a bummer because my hands are indeed freezing uh, because I forgot my cold weather gloves. I'm wearing my normal street gloves and uh, my sweet little fingies are getting cold. So, on-road impression of the uh, Desert X, very good for the touring capacity. Hopefully we get involved with some twistier roads as we get closer to these canyons. And then we'll see if it's got some sport bike chops. Uh, let's see if this bike can, uh, you know, hang a little bit in the twisties. All right, boys, some light off-roading with the Desert X. Bike is much more capable for than these roads. This is just like a nice, flowy, big gravel road. But, I mean, this is kind of what the bike's designed for, too. The long-distance touring, big gravel road thing. And uh, it, free it feels supremely confident in this environment right here. It's just kind of floating along, kind of play with the throttle a little bit. I'm in enduro mode right now. I just have it set in the pretty normal enduro mode. I didn't want to change anything or do anything different. <laughs> I mean, it's really working well. The thing with the Desert X is it doesn't have any of that dynamic suspension stuff. 
Oh, there we go. Got a little bit of squirrely sideways action. Doesn't have any of the cool dynamic suspension stuff that like, uh, well, like a Multistrada V4S or whatever. Like, it's got fixed suspension. So, once you put it in enduro mode, I think all it's really doing is just changing the engine map so that you don't have 115 horsepower. And it's got all these other kind of cool settings you can change on it. But otherwise, it's pretty bog standard. And yeah, I really like it so far. You know, I'm cruising here about 50 miles an hour on this gravel road, feeling stable, confident. I'm liking it. That's the big thing about adventure bikes, man. You want them to be able to really kind of cradle you a little bit and so you don't get yourself out of sorts. Because a lot of guys buy these as like their first foray into off-road bikes, which is uh, kind of a crazy thing to do should start on like a little dual sport and learn the basics but i mean my first foray into off-roading was with my desert sled and then i played life on hard mode for about a year until i got a real dirt bike and then i was like oh i am a dummy i should have done this from the beginning <laughs> i should have had a little dual sport from the get-go but uh i did not so yeah but I think this bike could really, you know, if someone's kind of getting into the world of off-road riding, this is a bike that you could really, you know, get along with well to start out with, you know. This isn't a bike that uh, is going to scare you too much on a road like this. I can even sit down if I want to. I'm standing up just because it feels good. But you can sit down, just cruise along, plod along this bike. You feel the front end kind of dancing around a little bit because you're on gravel, you know. But yeah, it feels good. I like it. All right, folks, still cruising along these easy-going gravel roads here with the Desert X. And I got to say, one thing I really like about this bike is having a bi-directional quick shifter on an ADV. Actually, it's really cool because then when you're standing and you're doing something a little more technical, which obviously this is not, um, you don't have to operate the clutch. It just makes things a little bit easier. So I still think this is a pretty good option for that kind of entry-level ADV situation. Um, just a little back there. I don't think the cameras are rolling, but I ended up going through a little bit of a deeper sand pit with this thing. That was interesting. Um, does pretty well. Uh, you know, it's still a heavy bike. It's 450, 460 pounds. So compared to a lightweight dirt bike doing something like that, it still feels a little awkward for me personally as a guy who has a Husky FE501 that I do a lot of trail riding with. Um, you know, these big ADV bikes have never really been my favorite category of bike, but this is really what they're designed to do and this Desert X currently in the desert, uh, you know, it's, it's what it's supposed to do. Right now I got an enduro mode, still sitting down here, just kind of taking it easy a little bit. Could be standing, but don't need, feel the need to. I'm gonna drop down in a second, see if we can get a little, a little sideways. Get that little, some sideways action there, why not? <laughs> See if there's a corner on this uh, big wide open gravel road, huh? Doesn't appear to be too many of them out here in the flat wide desert. Okay, quick wheelie check on the Desert X. Do second gear. Just float a little bit. <laughs> That's neutral. <laughs> yeah, it wheelie's so nice, man. Honestly, it's really playful. It feels like it's super stable doing it, and it likes to do it too, which is fun. Do another one in second gear. That is so fun. <laughs> that is so fun. It's, it's so willing. I love it. It's just a little hool. Alrighty everyone, making our way through some of the chunkier stuff here. Finally in some, something the Desert X here could, uh, this feels a little more appropriate for this bike. Something a little chunkier, a little fun. And I gotta say, the suspension's working well. Thought it was gonna be a little stiff, cause on road it felt like a pretty stiff little kind of sport bike setup, but gotta say off road, I'm, I'm interested in this, it's doing all right. See that GS in front of me is, uh, Working hard, this Ducati's not working nearly as hard as that GS up in front of me. Go down into first gear here. Cruising uphill. Oh yeah, we got a little bit of rock garden action going on. Yeah, this is the stuff, this is good. Something a little tighter, a little more fun. Desert X is eating it up. 
I don't think that should have surprised anybody, but it's doing a fantastic job. Okay, everyone, doing a voiceover for the wrap-up on this Ducati Desert X review from my hotel room because the GoPro footage looks like complete ass and my SD card was having issues. I ended up taking the Desert X on some non-recommended trails, and I was really impressed with how it held up. It rides like a Tuareg 660, but just cranked up a little bit more. It's like when you've got a guitar tone that's just really dialed in nice, but then you just roll the knobs on your fuzz pedal or the gain on your amp just that little bit more, and you enter into that next level of distortion. It's not a perfect bike, though. Here's the things I didn't gel with. First of all, the bike does get hot. It's a Ducati, and I'm pretty sure it wasn't equipped with a factory option seat warmer, but because it's a Ducati, you get a built-in seat warmer whether you want one or not. Speaking of the seat, it's plenty comfortable for an all-day ride, but by the end of about five or six hours in the saddle, there's a strange vibration that comes from the L-Twin that just kind of makes your nether region go a little bit numb. Overall though, it's so sporty and fun to ride on pavement, there really isn't a reason that an ADV should be this peppy and zesty on-road, and then it turns around and is very compliant and capable off-road too. Here's the thing though, I still think the Tuareg 660 massively deserves your consideration if you're thinking about the Desert X. I got the chance to ride a Tuareg 660 in Sardinia off the coast of Italy last year, and I was massively impressed with the bike. Particularly when you consider the price delta between these two, the Tuareg 660 is $11,999 and the Desert X is $16,795, so it's nearly $5,000 more for the Ducati. You could buy a used dual sport and have the Tuareg for the price of the Ducati, so is it worth it? Well, it depends on the girth of your checkbook. For me, motorcycles are emotional. I don't buy the spec sheet. I don't buy bikes that make the most sense. My race bike is a Daytona 675. It's not the most competitive bike, but I just don't care because there's no other bike that makes me feel that way. It's the same with my Desert Sled. I bought it based on pure emotion. I love the way it rides and how it looks. And it's the same with my Turbo Hayabusa. There's really no other motorcycle like that that makes me feel that way, and guys, I gotta say, the Desert X did the same thing to me. I know there's lighter bikes, less expensive bikes, but at the end of the day, it looks so cool. And now I'm thinking about if I should just swap my Desert Sled for one. And as a side note, because you made it all the way to the end of the video, I'll tell you a small story. I called up Chris from Eurocycle to chat about this trip before I went out here, and he mentioned to me that the Desert X that I pre-ordered had arrived in Reno. I completely forgot that I pre-ordered one of these bikes, so I guess I am buying one. Maybe I'll do it as a modern classic giveaway, since this is the Yamanube channel and it's all made up and I'm memeing 90% of the time. Love you guys, see you later. Well, look at you, you've made it to the end of another Yammy Noob video. You should consider yourself pretty lucky because I have curated this one right over here for you to continue watching. It's probably just as good as the one you just saw. Unless you hated the one you just saw. I don't know, maybe leave me a comment down below about how you much you hated it as well too. Or just keep watching this one. Make sure you keep watching Yammy Noob. Don't forget to keep watching Yammy Noob. That's the most important thing. Keep watching Yammy Noob.